Alright you guys, welcome back. Uh, we are trying to finish up checking out this brand new software, the 4K Capture Utility for the Elgato HD 60S Plus. We're going to go ahead and start this right back up. Now in our last two videos we went over the overview on the capture side, we went through the library, and in this video we're going to go through the settings. So in order to find the settings at any time, you've got it here on the top right, whether you're in capture mode or in your library mode. This is much more streamlined than we had in our past software for the Elgato HG 60S. And I don't know how I feel about that because you can't do as much as you could with the old software. So here under preferences, we've got general. This is very, very simple. Uh, you can enable Streamlink beta, which I actually have no idea what this is. Let's see what pops up real quick. Streamlink is a new feature added to the 4K capture utility. Streamlink can be enabled to record clean video and audio in 4K capture utility while utilizing the same video and audio in third party software. Okay, so this is going to be used uh, for OBS. Now, like I said, that's probably the best way for you to go ahead and stream with the software. We kind of already knew that. Um, I'm not exactly sure what this does. Again, I've only been playing with this for like a day and a half. So um, we will enable this at some point and then make a more full featured video out of it. Uh, this is your software version. You can go ahead and check for updates. I always leave mine on automatic so that it can do the updates in the background. Don't have to wait for it whenever you're trying to record. And then help improve 4K capture utilities by sharing anonymous uses data. Now, of course, you can choose whether or not you want to have this on, but I usually leave mine on just to try to help out. Now the format that we've got here, this is I think the only thing that we can stream at, even if we enable this. Uh, oh, you can actually stream higher. Oh, oh, okay, so we're gonna have to check that out. But um, I don't know that you'd wanna stream in anything higher than 1080p 60 frames a second right now anyways, just because not everybody has 4K screens and uh, you wanna be able to provide the best stream to everyone so that everyone can go ahead and watch your streams and not have such a hard time just trying to process them while you're streaming. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that as is, but uh, if you wanna enable this or not is really up to you for right now. We'll make a more detailed video on this at some other point. I'm actually gonna leave mine enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and click on apply. And then for your devices, uh, we've got the Game Capture HD 60S Plus, which I do believe is the only thing that we can have. Uh, firmware now all this is brand new to me so it's a little bit weird but we've got our input which is 1080p at 60 frames a second uh, your audio input for me is HDMI uh, you can have analog HDMI is probably gonna work best for you guys HDMI color range uh, I have just left it on same as input because that's gonna give you the same thing you've got through your HDMI but you can go ahead and click on expand or shrink uh, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is uh, I'm not actually sure, to be perfectly honest with you guys, what input EDID mode is. So I'm just gonna leave it the way we had it. And then internal as well. Uh, internal, we could probably set this to 1080p, but until I know more about it, uh, we'll just leave it on default. We're still gonna be getting at least a 1080p 60 FPS stream whenever we're streaming. And we know we're gonna be recording in 1080p 60 frames a second in HDR. Um, whenever we're just recording video. So that's actually great. So um, after that, you've got your picture, which you can go ahead and change. Uh, let me go ahead and click on OK here so you guys can actually see what that looks like. Make sure that my screen is on. So if we go back here and click on your picture, you can actually go ahead and change this about. If you guys feel like you need to go ahead and set things up any differently, you've got your brightness here. You've got your contrast. Jeez, that's crazy. Uh, your saturation, um, which at least from what I'm seeing right now is only going to change this on your software. I don't see any changes on the TV, which is perfectly fine. So that means you can go ahead and change this to make it look the way you want to while you're recording while not really affecting what it is that you actually see on screen. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that. I think everything actually looks pretty good the way it is. Uh, for your recording stuff, again, this is much more streamlined in my opinion. Uh, for what the other software on the Ogato HD 60S was. We'll go over that in another series. But right here, you've got your library location, which you can go ahead and set to whatever it is that you want. You've got your screenshot location, which again, you can go ahead and change this by just clicking on here and deciding where you want your screenshots to go. I'm actually gonna leave mine so it just pops up on the desktop. 
you've got your video encoder which uh, I've got the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti um, I know it's not the best that's out there but uh, it for sure gets the job done for what I need uh, you can enable HDR recording I don't know why I didn't have that enabled before but um, again on the software you can record at 1080p 60fps while also recording in HDR while you're playing in 4k HDR so I think that's pretty cool you got your format here which again you can choose how you want to actually record this stuff uh, we're gonna leave that there you've got your bitrate which I'm not really gonna mess with uh, output is gonna be 1080p 60 frames a second reduce preview frame rate during recording I usually don't mess with that now you can change your flashback recording which I showed you guys in the first video for the capture area which is this bar down here uh, you can set it to however you, uh, however long you want. You can set it for up to four hours in the past, or uh, it comes set to two. But if you really wanted to change this to like five minutes or 10 minutes, you can go ahead and do that. Or you can go ahead and turn this off completely. Now I'm gonna leave it at two hours, but if you go ahead and turn this off and apply it, you guys will see that uh, the flashback recording bar down at the bottom actually goes away. Now, obviously in my case, like I say, I recorded a lot of stuff. Sometimes I forget to press the record button, so it's always important to go ahead and uh, have this enabled. So I'm gonna leave that on. I'm gonna leave it, uh, I can probably do less than two hours. We can do one hour. So let's set that to 60 minutes, just in case uh, for some reason or another I forget something. And then you've got your mic. Now again, uh, this is meant to be used whenever you're streaming with OBS. So there's not a whole lot of actual options that you can do to your microphone here as you guys see whenever i talk you guys can see that the input levels are here uh, you can try to monitor your audio if you want but that's just for you to go ahead and see what you actually sound like um, i would do it as a first thing that you do before you start recording and then shut it off afterwards so you can actually hear what you sound like we're going to go ahead and apply that um, you can choose which microphone you're using here um, I use the microphone Blue Yeti mic. Uh, you can go ahead and apply that. But that's pretty much it. These are very simple in my opinion. Uh, you can't actually change too much about it. In our old software, we could actually set a uh, limiter on the mic, which is good in case you're getting feedback and stuff like that. You can actually go ahead and change it. This is very much streamlined. It works great. I haven't had any issues with it. But uh, in the older software, you could also remove your voiceover from the actual gameplay. And this one, it kind of just mixes everything together, which is all right, but can make editing kind of a pain in the butt. Now you can do more settings to your microphone. You can do more settings uh, to pretty much anything that you want if you're using OBS. And we will make videos for those in the future. But um, I just wanted to go over all the settings that we've got with this software alone. Now, one major thing that is missing from the software, as I've said uh, in the past, I don't feel like this is feature complete as some of the other software that we've had in the past. Uh, there is no way for you to stream from this 4K capture utility, which is totally fine because if I'm going to be streaming, I'm gonna be using OBS. But uh, if you really wanted to with the Elgato HD60S, you could either record or stream from that software alone. You didn't have to use any other software. And this one, if you wanna stream, it's really best for you to use something like OBS or XSplit or some other type of streaming service. Whereas if you just wanna record, you can totally use this just the way it is. And uh, I think that's really good for me because I do a lot more recording than I do streaming. And if I'm gonna stream, I'm gonna be using OBS anyways. So that pretty much uh, concludes what we've got in the UI for the 4K capture utility. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we'll go ahead and show you guys how to set up your Xbox and PlayStation to actually go ahead and play in 4K while you're still recording in 1080p. So I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And uh, if you guys have any other questions about the UI, the software, or any suggestions that I could go ahead and make, let me know down in the comments below. As always, if you guys like this video or anything else that I do, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, and we will see you guys next time.